this is a, this is a pretty interesting thing because we have started uh, for up your game community. We have started this virtual uh, sessions for the first time. We have never done virtual oh. before. We have done so many live events over five years. Um, yes. you know, we have done live feeds from our live uh, live events, but we have never done entirely virtual sessions. So I guess we uh, we are all learning new things. So I'll just talk to Vernon before you guys joined in that that you know I think this this, this virus, uh, if there's any good thing that can come out of it, is going to be that we are all learning, adapting, and growing uh, in yes, new ways definitely. and different ways. We are being forced to do this, right? So yes. uh, you know this is uh, this is only a second virtual session. So I'm going to try to moderate and host this as well as I can. But do forgive me if I'm making blunders and errors. Because I'm <laughs> hey, no problem. <laughs> okay. right. so, so thank you. We have got three very interesting guests today. The topic is uh, how do we stay well um, physically, emotionally, and mentally? Right? How do we stay well physically, mentally, and emotionally? Uh, this is an important topic, I believe, because number one, of course, the virus uh, hits straight out in the immune system, right? Uh, mm. So, so. Uh, you want to you want to avoid getting a virus. You want to stay safe. You want to stay healthy. Uh, so how do we do that? Second reason is because you know uh, as a result of this pandemic, I think a lot of countries over the world either are in lockdown situation or uh, in Singapore we've got a circuit breaker situation, right? So uh, but more or less it's about social isolation where you're more or less stuck. So being stuck at home, you know, your, your physical mobility reduces, you're not going out as often mm -hmm. or as much anymore, uh, you know, yeah. so physically you're less active, you know, and what mm -hmm. impact can that have? Mentally, emotionally, same environment, same four walls, same people, you know, although you surely love your family, but when you're seeing them 24-7 over a prolonged period of time, you know, yes. tensions can build yeah. up. Uh, so that could lead exactly. to, uh, you know, people are worried about work, <coughs> job, income, mm. business, you know, uh, employment, careers, you know, all kinds of debts, uh, all kinds of things. There's so much of stress and, and, and emotional unrest that would probably be going yeah. on. Uh, and right. also, this is just from the fact that I've been speaking to people and this is what I've been hearing, noticing. If you look at Facebook mm. page or you look at conversations, so I thought this might be an interesting topic for us to talk yeah, about. Definitely. Why we have brought in all you experts uh, to, to, to share with us some insights on how we can stay well uh, physically, mentally, emotionally during this period of time. So first off, we have Joy. Joy is a registered Hello. psychologist. Um, so we'll get Joy to, to, of course, introduce herself a bit more later on. Uh, sure. Joy has been with us before. She spoke at uh, our first wellness symposium and and such a marvelous job that she did. Uh, very thank you. Tips and insights. So looking forward to that from you, Joy, once again. Uh, thank you. And then after that, we have Dr. Saravanan. Dr. Saravanan is, I guess, uh, I can hands down say this. Dr. Saravanan is the best uh, natural path I've come across. Oh. The guy is versatile. <laughs> Uh, he knows everything. You, he knows from naturopathy to Reiki to hypnotherapy to uh, all kinds of tools, you know. And you walk into his office, he just gets this amazing energy over there. He creates his own products, you know. He creates his own uh, therapies and systems. Um, he's an inventor, uh, very innovative guy. Uh, Thank you. A lot of respect for this man. So there's Dr. Saravanan there as well. You know, hoping to hear some insights from him on from a from an alternative physician point of view, uh, what are some things that we can look into, you know, especially from a nutrition point of view, from a, uh, from a, from a energy point of view, what is it that we can do to keep ourselves safe? So that's Dr. Saravanan. And then, of course, we have uh, Vanan. Uh, Vanan is, uh, is a fitness coach. He's also a mental strength coach. Always positive, oh. always upbeat, you know, always ready to go. He's... His energy levels are always like at Mount Everest standards, right? So, so, uh, but but this guy, every time he has come on to up your game, and I think he has come on to up your game at least twice or thrice so far. And every time he comes in, what I love about him is that he doesn't give you his complicated uh, steps to do from a fitness point of view, right? Like you got to hit the gym and do how many repetitions and how many what. He's going to give you simple things like, hey, take a ball and roll it under your heel. And, <laughs> and that's magic. So, so, so you know, he, he does this simple, simple stuff, uh, which I think will be very uh, applicable in the home environment, but not everybody may have a full set of gym equipment. So, what I'm really hoping to hear from you on that, and of course, from a mental strength perspective as well, what we can do. Now, that's my brief introduction about all of you. 
Uh, you you okay. each have two minutes to introduce more about yourselves if there's anything I missed out on. All right, so so I think our, our audience, <coughs> our viewers can get to know you a bit better. So Joy, let's start with you. Uh, would you have something to say about okay. yourself? Oh, sure. Yeah, hi, I'm Joy. I'm a psychologist, but don't worry, I don't read my... <laughs> what I do is I do counselling work, uh, especially with children and teens, and also do talks and workshops in companies and in schools and other organisations. Yeah, so this area of mental wellness is something very close to my heart. Yeah, because um, I, have to, I do have like people whom I know very personally, my close friends who are having um, some mental health uh, issues and also some family members as well. So I think this area actually um, is something that I really want to help people with, especially during this period of time. Yeah. Nice. Thank you so much, Joy. I, I think the work that you, you do and the contributions you're going to be able to make is going to be amazing. So definitely thank looking you. forward to everything that you do and thank you for your service. Uh, I think as a psychologist, no problem. And mental health and well-being, it's a very critical function. Uh, uh, not only during this virus period, I think in the day and age, yes. and the way that the society functions, it's very much yeah, needed. It's yeah, right. So thank you very much, John. Exactly. Uh, thank you. Oh, no, you're welcome. Dr. Saravanan, two minutes. Sir. <laughs> hey, hello. Um, I hope I meet everybody's expectation, especially when uh, Rahul set the bar so high up. Um, <laughs> Well, um, I'm, I'm a naturopathic physician. I, I began as a, as a naturopath and, and, um, and then eventually I went on to learn other skills. What I do, I provide remedial solutions for physical ailments and emotional stress. And the, my specific area of focus has been on cancer management, pain management, uh, disorders, skin challenges, and stress. Right? Um, I went on to learn about uh, stress and managing stress through uh, various forms of psychotherapy. Hypnotherapy is one part of it. Um, and um, I created a, a healing modality called the Accelerated uh, Healing System, where we could bring about and empower a person and, and bring a huge change in about half an hour. That's what we would want to empower people with so that they can move on with their life, um, releasing all the stresses that contributes to their physical challenges. Uh, yes, I use a lot of energy tools. Um, we created a system called Biofinity. We use it in our mats, uh, in our supplements. And what they do is that they balance your uh, energy centers in your body. At the same time, it also enhances the bioavailability of my supplements so that you don't need to take too much of it, just one or two pills. Uh, it should start kicking and support your body. And um, and uh, I also do a lot of talks. And uh, one of the talks that I enjoy doing is about wealth manifestations. We've been doing a lot of empowering uh, with people through this uh, mode of workshop and having some good results. And uh, well, with the COVID situation that is happening, I'm willing to share about some things that we can do physically and emotionally to empower ourselves. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Doc. What then? Two minutes, buddy. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. Um, welcome. Hello. Uh, hi. hi. Um, so I have about um, close to about 20 over years of experience in the fitness, uh, but I'm going to make it very short introduction. Uh, over the past 18 years, I was just a, a coach who just go by reputations and just lifting up the weights and um, you know getting losing weight and toning up. So that's what's my expertise. But something magical happened over the past five years where I started to explore uh, Mother Nature. So I started to strengthenize with the hurt, with the universe. So, and then I started what I call blissfulness, uh, mind alertness, my mental strength, like what Joyce is working as professionally. Um, so I'm actually very interested in more about mind. And then I started to explore how to stay blissful under extreme conditions. And it's all about surrounding. I mean, I saw Dr. Saravanan before going to nature parks and doing talks and kind of stuff. So I'm exactly the earth guy. But uh, what I'm trying to bring to the table today is how to live blissfully and at the same time, how to be fit and healthy as well. So that, that is my expertise, uh, I mean, to share humbly with everyone. Wonderful. Well, then let's just start with you. Let's dive straight in. Uh, what okay. are your observations about the situation so far? I mean, you are on social media, you are training your own groups of people uh, when it comes to wellness and health. Uh, so you are definitely in a lot of networks and you meet people from different 
walks of life, right? So what has been your observation? How is this affecting people negatively or positively? Um, actually, first, I got to start off with uh, mentally because I, if you have seen my post, um, I always say that a stronger mind is the strongest physical body. So if everything that starts here is weak, it will channel to your body in terms of whatever the situation it can be. It will, became, it will make you the weakest link in the entire body system. But what I like to share here today is a very short um, a practices that I always do and I always coach people. I call the dose, D-O-S-E, dopamine, uh, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins. So all these are, are the hormones in our body. And what's exactly happening is whatever we see, whatever we hear, whatever we feel, your body is listening actively, not passively, but actively. Mm -hmm. So when it processes here, yeah, it just generate and transform to your body. So I can be a, a, a marathon runner, I can be a fit guy or whatever. But if this becomes weak, automatically your body just loses the capability to perform at extreme conditions. So what we see here, it's about media. What we hear is about sorrow. What we hear is about challenging situations in future and non-predictable, yeah, about our future, our family, our loved ones. So what exactly has become as, as a fear? What will happen? What happens? Why is happening? When is happening? So all these uh, parameters in a kind of fear that is an unknown zone. So what I think that people should step out, all right, and they, they have a weakness and strength within themselves. But what they need to identify is, how am I going to make this weakness into strength? So that is where... Uh, a lot of people should come in, like like Joy's expertise is basically about the mind. But there's also an interest in the physical fitness because like I mentioned, like endorphins, right? The dose. So when you exercise, your body actually releases these chemical hormones called endorphins. And that's why if you see people after an exercise program, they're just always like a jumping bunny. They're always full with energy. They are ready to jump. They're ready to conquer. So that is a part of your hormones that it's on the endorphins. But on the top list, what we call the dopamine. So the dopamine is also a kind of a, 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 a chemical in the body where you certain times when you eat like foods like eggs, bananas, example like a monkey, right? The monkey is always happy and jumping and mischievous. So why is that so? Because in banana itself, there's tyrosine. And that tyrosine is actually is what it elevates your mood. Just like coffee. People go for coffee, it's because of addiction, but people go for coffee because of the hype. I drink a coffee, I become strong. After three, four hours, I need a coffee. <laughs> so what has become of that is the addiction. But if you exercise, that also increases your dopamine level. So that's number one. Number two, I'm going into oxytocin. So oxytocin is basically about meditation, it's about giving a gift to others, or maybe sharing a meal. So the kind of happiness that you get when someone is happy, that is oxytocin because you are actually seeing, hearing and feeling. Maybe the person comes give you a hug or give you a high five, thank you for the food. So that's a kind of a hormones also releasing within the body. And the third one is serotonin. So when we talk about serotonin, it's just basically about exercises. It's about laughter, being happy and you exercise. So exercise actually... 100% elevates your mood. It can be in the gym, it can be a walk, it can be in the nature, relaxing yourself. So every of these hormones plays a very important role in our body, but it can activate by exercise. So the word is exercise here. So if you exercise, you elevate. If you do certain aspects of those things, it also increases your mood. So the dose hormone is a very important hormone in our body because it, our body is chemical. It's all chemical induced. So how do you know, okay, uh, maybe say Rahul, right? Um, if I ever notice that I'm low in energy, um, not feeling good, the first thing I do is I go out and I get myself perspired. When I say I get perspired, I exercise. Within 30 minutes, I know my dopamine, my endorphins are high up. And then if I feel that, you know, you know what, I need some good food. So, you know, I go and have certain food like bananas or when I go and have eggs, beans, fish, all these will increase my dopamine level. And then mm -hmm. when I come to oxytocin, which I always do, do charity work or, you know, when I, when I, when I walk in the street, when I see an auntie pushing a cart, you know, auntie, buy a drink, a gift for you. 
you know. So that kind of happiness we get all the time. So it's it's all about us. It's all about physical fitness plays an important role in our body. So we should just step out from the uncomfort zone and focus on what we should be doing. Great. Thank you. So mind over body. What you put into the mind is what you put into the body eventually. Talk about yeah. certain chemical reactions that happen in our system, uh, depending on different things you are doing, you know, from what you're eating to who are you interacting oh. with, how are you interacting Hi. with them. And, uh, are you going to tell the truth? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, <laughs> 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 so, so who you are interacting with and also of course what kind of activities you're indulging yourself in, yeah. right? So whether you're doing charity work or whether you are going and helping people, you're doing acts of kindness, those kind of things yeah. as well are going to help you to uh, to remain mentally stronger, more positive mm -hmm. in your outlook and that translates into your, your higher energies, higher physical activities as well. So it makes you feel better overall, right? Uh, great insights. Uh, Joy, what has been your observation so far? Okay. Hey, um, I think first of all, I'd like to say that it's uh, perfectly normal and perfectly very natural to feel anxious in this uh, very unprecedented times. And uh, it's okay not to feel okay. Yeah, and it's perfectly okay to feel um, anxious uh, or maybe a bit down and so on. And these are not weaknesses and these are in fact what makes us human. So uh, firstly, um, just acknowledge what uh, we are feeling and so far I've actually received some um, because there's this uh, I'm part of the Singapore Psychological Society and we have a group of um, actually uh, members or psychologists who actually are providing uh, counseling services pro bono or actually at reduced rates and for the past two days actually we uh, received for me personally I received uh, quite a number of um, emails or like um, messages requiring uh, support it shows that people, especially during this um, start, of the, start of the circuit breaker period, I think people are actually starting to feel the anxiety, the stress and the uncertainty. I think it's um, actually showing now, yeah, very much so. Yep. So that's what I observed recently. Great. And, and most of yep. this, 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 uh, mm. this, this uh, uh, feelings are, are created by not mm. knowing enough. Right? I guess people are yes. thinking that, that it's very new, we don't have mm. enough information about this. Exactly. It doesn't help every time yeah. you read the news and there's been a spike of cases. Exactly. Even more anxious, right? Exactly, exactly. I guess uncertainty actually is a fuel or a source of um, anxiety as well. Yeah, so um, actually one strategy that we actually encourage people to take note of is to limit the consumption of news. And also uh, perhaps just um, maybe we can actually set a time, like a time like 4 p.m., 15 minutes maximum to read the news because there's so much uh, influx of um. Uh, information coming in from all areas and if we get so um like um i mean uh, i mean uh, filled up with all these news from everywhere i think our mind is, is going to be uh, really really anxious tense and uptight so it'll be good to actually uh, focus on to help ourselves by setting aside just maybe a period of time um to look at the news and even social media mind our consumption of social media as well yeah, yeah so that's one strategy Sure. But with so much of time on hand now when people are not going to work, <laughs> yeah. you know, social media seems to be the most natural thing where people are going to turn exactly. to suddenly. Right? So I'm going to come back to exactly. you later, Joy. And one of the questions I'm going yeah. to ask you is, uh, sure. so if, if, uh, if not the news, not social media, uh, yeah. you know, and, mm. and but then I'm going to ask you this question as well, right? So, yeah. so if not news, not social media, then what can we do in the confines of ah, our okay. homes? and stay cool. so, uh, socially mm. isolated and distant, right? But before mm. we get on to that, let me come sure. to Dr. Saravadan. Dr. Saravadan, have you been seeing uh, more people coming in <laughs> to seek your services at this point in time? Yes, uh, there had been, uh, there's been a, uh, a steady increase in people who are inquiring about improving their immune system and trying to keep healthy. I feel that uh, the current situation where Singapore being so small and uh, congested, um, I, I personally feel, this is my personal opinion, is that probably everybody's kind of exposed to this COVID-19 and uh, some of them are responding because of weak immune system 
The others are holding the fort because they have a strong immune system. So uh, I'm encouraging people in my writings and, and, and talks that I, I have with him in groups is that um, work on your immune system and, and you can keep this virus from, from affecting you. Uh, some of the simple things that I would encourage anyone to do is uh, something that you, you don't really need to go out there and buy supplements, but you can do it on your own. Um, of course, there are just all kinds of information out there on WhatsApp and Facebook and any other social media. The best thing about the Indian thing is about the rasam that everybody must drink and you know keep yourself healthy and all this. Well, actually, it helps. Uh, but when you look at nutrition point of view, uh, sunlight is an essential thing to have. So I would encourage people to get some sun. And uh, fair skin people will benefit more from it because they will naturally get a vitamin D absorbing into their body. Dark skin people like me, one end we will have some challenges because uh, we don't absorb uh, vitamin D as effectively. So we need to supplement ourselves with vitamin D, especially the particular D that we're talking about is D3. Uh, they would help in, in boosting your immune system, preventing cardiovascular strokes and, uh, and improving your bone and joint health. Yeah? And vitamin C is another one. Um, it's good to, for an adult. You can take up to about 6,000 mg of vitamin C in this period because um, it naturally boosts your immune system, fights all the free radicals and, and supports you. Uh, you can have it through some fruits, but the amount of vitamin C you're going to get is about 15 milligrams. But you need about a thousand milligrams at each uh, interval. So, and about you break the whole day into six uh, six periods, and uh, so you take about a thousand uh, mg in divided doses. You will find that um, you need quite a bit mm -hmm. of vitamin C. So supplementing it through vitamin C will be the best thing. Repairs you need repairs in your body. So anything that is not functioning effectively and you need support and restoring balance in your body, we need to get um, trace minerals into our body. Uh, minerals play an important part opposed to vitamins. They, they play a support, but minerals are doing all the essential repairs that has to take place in your cell. So a good multi-mineral complex will be a good thing to have as well. Um, and then I um, would also encourage people to have some magnesium and uh, magnesium will help you to calm down and relax. The best form of magnesium is chocolates. Oh, <laughs> yes. that's my favorite. Yeah, to have a, uh, <laughs> about 70, 80% chocolates, um, one square uh, every night, it's good enough to give you uh, the essential magnesium that you need because chocolates are full of magnesium. Yeah, and, um, and I'm sure everybody will have some form of honey in their home. So honey helps you with your sleep. Right, so take some honey and mix it in warm water, drink it and sit in a dark room, naturally you'll fall asleep, right? And this will be a good thing to have, especially uh, in this situation. We all stress um, and because of stress, we, our immune system gets weakened as well because of our stresses and uh, sleep helps to repair, right? And the best time to knock off 10 p.m., that's where your universal repair times um, Kick starts and kicks in. So 10 to 2 a.m. Uh, is the, the official repair time that you have naturally occurring in your body. It's according to your circadian rhythm as well, or they call it the biological clock. Yeah. So it's good to have that uh, going in your system. Try to get uh, early sleep. And uh, if you need to do something in the later in the night, or if you're a night person, you can wake up after two, three o'clock or what. And, uh, Go out there, do something, and uh, and help yourself as well. Yeah. So essential things: vitamin C, D, trace minerals, uh, melatonin. So you get that from honey. Uh, these are some of the things that you can do. Cause food, um, given the challenges now, I would encourage people to have more vegetables and uh, and the best form of uh, natural protein would be millets. They support your body and they go direct to your DNA and they repair a lot of things in yourself. Yeah? So millets will be a good inclusion in your diet. There's a whole host of recipes out there in YouTube. My favorite uh, quinoa biryani is, is yummy. I love to cook. Oh. and uh, So I posted some uh, videos before. 
and quinoa, uh, you can make some nice biryani with it. Yeah? So yummy. And, uh, and then uh, there are many other things you can do, you know, uh, some herbs that uh, Indians grow. I've even seen Chinese grow with as well. Basil, the Indian basil is an amazing herb to use. Uh, in fact, when COVID was uh, first noticed in different parts of the world, or especially in China, I posted an article about basil and how it would help. And putting it in water and chewing a few leaves will be uh, uh, the best thing you can give your body to support your respiratory health and your immune system. So simple things that we can do and they can do marvelous help in your body. Right. Mm -hmm. Great, Doctor, those are very, very uh, nice, concrete steps, right? Love it. Now you know why I, why he's my favorite physician. Uh, <laughs> not, not many physicians are going to recommend to you chocolates and biryanis for good health. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, he, he becomes automatically everybody's favorite physician. So guys, uh, in short, I think what he has to say quickly to summarize it, get some sun, very important, get out there, get in the sun. Uh, for those of us in Singapore, uh, PM has said, uh, uh, circuit breaker, not lockdown. And I think they have said that we are allowed to go to the parks as long as we maintain social mm. and physical distance. So go alone or go with immediate family, but don't create gatherings. But we are still allowed to go for walks. So I think make use of that, get some sun out there. Vitamin D, vitamin C, 6,000 mg of vitamin C. That's a lot of vitamin C. So do supplement that. It's a vitamin C tablets according to Dr. Saravan. Uh, multimineral complex, magnesium, so chocolates. Yes, uh, uh, one square every night. Now, he has not stipulated how big that one square is. So, uh, watch your own calories, whatever you guys like. Uh, and honey, and of course, uh, sleep, right? So, so, sleep, biryani, and uh, chocolate, three favorite things, and you are very, very healthy. Thank you, Dr. Uh, what then? What are some simple exercises that we can do in the house? You know, uh, we are confined to the homes. Uh, what are some simple activities that we can do without uh, getting up? Okay, um, I think um, e even before we, uh, when, when our government has mentioned the lockdown or rather the circuit breaker, um, then uh, immediately all the sport shop in Singapore was wiped out. Everybody was buying dumbbells, the mat, so everything was just literally gone the shelves. And I, I witnessed it personally because I was at the Calton. And things are just going off like a hot kick. I never ever seen in my fit, whole entire fitness career where the guy brings in a big pallet of dumbbells, the dumbbells just disappear. So, so yes, and, and, and all the dumbbells stepped out in Decathlon, all the places are totally sold out until 11 p.m. On the, on, the, on the night itself, on the prior night itself. So what I think is exercise is the one of the key factors in uh, wellness. Uh, comparison to a lot of things that we've talked about, you know, um, you know, some people take it as an hobby as, you know, going to the clubbing or having alcohol, you know, daily. So everything has been cut. So now the only thing that you have is your space. So within the space, what kind of exercises you can actually do? Uh, Push-ups are perfectly fine. Uh, Push-up is actually using your body weight because if you do not have weights at home, especially, you know, uh, at least 2 kg or 3 kg, doesn't matter at all. You know, you can use your own body weight to do a push-ups. So when you do a push-ups, you're not only working on a, a certain muscle group. What is basically working on is also your cardiovascular. Because example I give you, all right? If you do a 15 repetitions, all right? If you do a 15 repetitions, automatically you elevate your heart rate about 20 to 30 feet. Or you can even go up to 40. Our resting heart rate is about 60 to 80. Depending on the age. And depending on uh, the individual performances, right? So a push-up is a very good one. And um, I'm, I'm going to show you a few couple of exercises since we are in the topic right now. All right. So what I'm going to do is about 20 push-ups. Uh, you see, you know, just using the body straighten up. And if I'm going to show you the lower parts, keep the, not to drop it, but keep your butt eye up. And then you go as low as possible. Mm -hmm. and it, right. And, and, and especially if... Um, uh, women, right? I mean, of course, the, some might not have done push-ups before. So what I will suggest for them is to put the knees down, right? So you can actually put your knees down and then support it and then you can just go a little bit. But make sure when you do that, um, you do not want to slouch your back because then you're putting a lot of pressure on your lower back. 
I mean, this is one of the best exercises that I can recommend. Mm -hmm. And I think another interesting exercise that uh, a lot of sports professionals, or even for most who do not go to the gym, they do that. That's called squats. So I'm going to perform that and show it to you. So all you need to do is have a chair, all right? And I'm going to bring down the screen a little so that you can actually see my angle. So you hold on to the chair and then you do a squat. So when the squat is make sure that your knee doesn't go over your toes. If you do this, you see, I'm pushing my knees up. So that's going to be bad for your cartilage, for your ligaments and your tendons. So it's very, very bad. So what you need to do, imagine there's a chair behind. So I'm going to sit behind. So it's a 45 degree down and I'm sitting it down. And then I'm coming up with my body straight. So I'm going to show you the full range. Mm -hmm. Down, and I'm not doing slouching, keeping my body straight. Down and up. And for those who have not done squats and exercise, I think the chair will help you a lot because it gives you a stable support. Mm -hmm. And then it brings you up and down. And even if you do these kind of squats, say about 15 repetitions for five sets, and then you do the push-ups, for about five sets of 15 repetition, that's already will increase your perspiration. Your heart rate will go up. At the same time, you feel good, right? You feel you have done something. And how about cardiovascular exercises? Because now what I just show you is some strength exercises. But now let's do some cardio exercises. All you need to do is put a very nice song. You can put Bhangra, you can put some Chinese songs or Indian songs. What kind of a song? Doesn't matter because you are in your own home. That is your world. So example, I'm just going to show you my feet. All right? All you need to do is just one minute of this. But make sure for those who have pains in the knees, these exercises is not recommended because that put a lot of pressure. But for those who doesn't have any pains on the knees, you are most welcome. Put a song for a good track for three minutes and all you do is this. So that actually works for your cardiovascular system. And by doing that, within the first 15 minutes, you can start to see perspiration happens. And, and it's actually pros and cons. Being in the gym for over 18 over years, I always notice that, you know, in the gym settings, it's always cool environment because of the condition. Because if you don't have a ventilation there, um, it might not work the best. So if you're doing an outdoor, you will start to perspire. And it also creates a thermogenic. A thermogenic is a heat provided by your body because the thermogenic and the atmosphere pressure combine your perspiration ratio increases so when your perspiration ratio increases you are dehydrating which is good but then again you need to drink lots of water to hydrate so your body is flushing out all the toxin out from the body so you have your cardiovascular workout done you have your resistance training done and then some can say hey, you know what i want to work out on my bicep i don't want to you know i want to do some workout so easy all you need to do is just grab a book. So I'm going to borrow my daughter's Oxford dictionary like right now. <laughs> I, I, I probably think this is about, probably about two pages, right? But it's okay. We have to use whatever that is given at this opportunity because that is the best thing. Because if you think that, oh, I need dumbbells to work on, then a lot of things will kick in and then you start to feel guilty. You give as use of knowledge, it doesn't matter, all you need is a book. So look at me, keeping my body straight, I'm holding onto the book, lightly, and up. It's not AV, but if you wait for 50 to 60 repetition, you can start to feel the burn. And that is where all the lactic acid ah. starts come. So simple exercises, bicep curl, all right? And if you have the same book at the same size, which probably you are not, because you won't have a two dictionary at home. So you can change it to the other end. The same thing for about 50 to 60 repetition. And then another one is what we call the shoulder press. So you bring it up and then we push it in. All right, make sure you grab the whole of the books and then you go in up. All right, so because of the weight and the intensity they were talking about, right? And the duration. So if you keep your exercise for about 30 to 40 minutes, but because of the weight that given is low, so you need to increase the reputation, so about 50 to 60. And you see, I've just done a few exercises and I'm already starting to perspire. The condition is the thermogenic and the atmosphere pressure makes me perspire faster. 
so I need to drink water. That's about it. Yeah? That's a quick uh, 15 minutes uh, demonstration. So squats, the push ups, and then your dance movement. Do whatever you feel that you feel good. That's about it. Manan has been having a lot of home parties cool. recently, so he's been posting ah. videos of him dancing. Uh, oh. So maybe as a closing to this session today, he might show us some dance moves uh, later oh. on. <laughs> right. But I like the great. point that you mentioned about perspiring and water, right? Because these yeah. are two things we are going to do less of when we are at home. Because when yes. we're in the office, we have our flasks, we have our cups, you know, completely filled. We need an excuse to get away from our computer. So we go to the pantry, keep topping it up as an excuse to walk away from our desk. But when we are at home, we may not do that. We may forget how to do that. I've been hearing more and more cases of people, you know, uh, at 4 p.m. in the evening, their breakfast is still on the table. They have not had time to eat their breakfast yet. So they're working extra hard, right? Because they do not want their bosses to think that they're skiving uh, because they're not at home. So, you know, we may forget how to do these things. So just to drive home this message on the importance of water and the importance of perspiring. Dr. Saravani, can I just bring you back to share why is it important to perspire? Why is it important to drink water? Well, when... Uh I think the best thing to, like what Wanan shared, uh, getting water into our body is the key thing. I'll talk about that first. Uh, because water, when you rehydrate yourself, um, you need to know how much you need to rehydrate yourself as well. So I have a simple rule of thumb is about uh, every 20 kilo of human weight, you take a liter of water. So if you are a 60 kilo person, you'll be doing about three liters of water. So how to get three liters? of water. Not many of them drink that much of water, you know, in any time. Yeah. So uh, a standard cup, 250 mils uh, cup, you drink about three glasses um, first thing in the morning as you get up. And then uh, for every two hours, you can set a simple alarm, drink water alarm and, um, and uh, drink about two glasses. And I would encourage people to stop drinking water after set, uh, just before seven. Right? If you're drinking a lot of water at night, especially ladies, uh, they, they don't want to drink much water in the day because they don't want to go to the toilet. The toilets are going to be even worse. But they would want to drink in the, in the night as they come back home. Right? So, but if you're drinking too much water into the night, uh, you will be having a disrupted sleep because you will get up and you time that is also going to wear out your kidneys and kidney issues is a huge problem in this country. So I would encourage everyone to drink water and finish your quota by 7 f And if you're really thirsty, just drink small amounts of water uh, in the, uh, in the, during the night. Yeah? And pers perspiring is the best way to clean your lymphatic system as well. As you remove all the toxins out of your body, and it also naturally helps to cool your body down as well because you're sweating. So um, yeah, as much as all the movements are happening and you're sweating and cooling down, so you reduce a lot of heat in your body. And in that process, uh, you're also removing and eliminating toxins out of your system. But when you're sweating after a workout, you got to rehydrate yourself, so you got to drink more water, right? Uh, otherwise you'll find that if you don't have enough water into your body, you're going to increase the acid episodes in yourself. And that's going to degenerate your body. You're going to have a lot of problems in your system. So you don't want that to happen. And so water would be an essential thing to do. Uh, and also, um, when people talk about drinking water, we're talking about clean, pure water. You know, uh, we're not talking about coffee and tea. Uh, they are fluid, but they cannot be classified as water. So the people who drink about five cups of coffee, if, you increase, if you're drinking so much of coffee, you will... ...balance that out. And too much of tea is not going to help with your digestive system. You're not going to uh, digest your foods effectively. So um, it is good to... And uh, if you can hit about 60, uh, 6 liters of water, or, or if you're a very big person, 3 liters is good enough. Start with 3 liters and I think you will be uh, in, a, in a good track to help and support your body. So 
I always encourage people to drink water. Great. Thank you so much, Doctor. That was uh, very enlightening as well. So stop drinking a lot of water before 7 p.m. Try to meet your quota before 7. That's very important. I think a lot mm. of us tend to overlook that. In fact, because we are most free after dinner or while having dinner, we drink a lot of water. After dinner, while watching TV, we are going to have our jugs and our cups with us <laughs> to drink a lot of water. <laughs> you know, while watching our Netflix and whatever, we are drinking, drinking. Uh, mm. so, so I think that's an that's a important uh, lesson uh, to restore before 7, right? for very real purposes, very practical reasons. You don't want to keep getting up in your sleep just to keep going to the, to the washroom. So, so that's valuable and important. Thank you, Doctor. Joy, coming to you. So, yeah. so you know, they always say they have, a, have an active body but a very still mind. <laughs> you know? Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Mm. When the mind moves okay. too much, it's also not good, right? But the body, you know, yeah. I mean, the body should always keep moving. So, so yes. in some parts, physiology and psychology, while they work in tandem, they may not always mm. be the same. They might actually be, yeah. be on, on, on opposite ends of the spectrum. So the body exactly. needs to sweat, but the mind shouldn't sweat too much. You know, because when the mind sweats too much, that means you get sweat. <laughs> right? So don't sweat yeah. before stuff. Uh, but you know, mm-hmm. I'm not an expert in this. You are the expert. So let's hear from you. What are some tips uh, and strategies and techniques uh, for, for having a healthy mind? Uh, but before you tell okay. us the techniques, can you please tell us also what should we look out for? What are some signs that we should look out okay. for in ourselves mm-hmm. or our family members during this period or at any period for uh, that? Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, okay, some signs of anxiety uh, to look out for is, for instance, the person starts to withdraw. Like the person, um, maybe he's uh, naturally very uh, cheerful and outspoken and suddenly you see him becoming very quiet and not wanting to interact much. That's one sign. Another sign could be uh, maybe this person um, just... Uh, feels that he doesn't want to do anything anymore. Nothing interests him anymore, not even his favorite uh, Netflix. Yeah, that's one uh, another sign um, like of losing interest in the things around him. Um, also, maybe if he, um, he stays in bed like all day long and he doesn't want to get out of bed, either he sleeps too much or he sleeps too little. Yeah, and perhaps also maybe something about appetite. If the person starts to eat uh, too much or too little or you see a sudden increase in weight or a sudden decrease in weight, that could be a cause for concern as well. And of course, I think the sleep issues. Uh, I mean, um, insomnia is one common sign of anxiety as well. Yeah, so these are some common signs that uh, of somebody having some anxiety or even uh, depression or low mood. Yeah, so coming, uh, I think just now you had a question about the social media, right? About the social media or something like that? Or yeah. is it about uh, like, so yeah. What do you do yeah. about social oh. media? What, what do we spend our time doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, exactly. I just, um, yeah, because social media, I think is a double-edged sword. And now I think we are actually uh, physical distancing ourselves from each other, one another. But it doesn't mean that we actually need to uh, isolate ourselves socially. So um, because since we cannot see each other uh, physically, social media is, is good for us to keep in contact with one another. Um, and especially when there's a community online and we feel that, oh, okay, we, we belong to this community. And when I type something, at least somebody hears me. So uh, on the other hand, if let's say, uh, if we are, feeling overwhelmed by the onslaught of uh, information, of, like, you know, when people post certain uh, stuff, certain news, which are not so pleasant, uh, then if we are feeling overwhelmed and we need to be self-aware that, oh, okay, I think I'm, I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed. So, so we need to actually know that, oh, okay, uh, it's time to actually maybe pull it back a bit and then uh, to stop for just a while. Yeah, and so the, the key is awareness of our own emotions as well. Yeah, so um, just now you mentioned about the thoughts, right? Our mind. Yeah, I thought that's a very good one. Yeah, and our mind actually uh, we start like, it starts to run, you know, like oh uh, yeah, when, and it actually causes uh, problems when our mind starts to run and um becomes haywire. So um, and one one very uh important um uh, strategy is actually to focus on what we can fo- control. Because um, there's so many things that we cannot control right now. Like even uh, things like, you know, uh, whether I can get my, my food, whether I can uh, have enough uh, toiletries and so on. 
so all the, these little, little things are actually adding up to our anxiety and uncertainties. So instead of focusing on these, we can actually uh, focus on the things that we can control. Like, for instance, uh, my routine. Like uh, setting a routine every day to have a sense of snob- of normalcy every day, and perhaps for instance, um, uh, focus on the little good things. Um, I call them LGTs, like little good things every day. Um, like um, even the morning sun. That is the morning sun. Like things that um, I mean, my, I get to spend time with my child. My child is not crying today so much. And so 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 little, little things that we uh take for granted. We can actually take um focus on them, and um research has shown that gratitude is actually a very powerful um uh strategy to actually uh for our mental well being and happiness. So I will actually uh want to encourage all of us if we can to actually keep a little journal, a little notebook. We call it the gratitude journal. Every day, write down uh three things that you are thankful for, uh one person that you are thankful for. And in the morning and before you sleep, um, what are the what is one thing that went on well today? So when we focus, when we choose to focus on the little good things, it actually helps us to um buffer a little bit of the uncertainty that we experience. Yeah. So um, one other uh, way to actually to to tame our mind is uh what we call a thought record. Yeah. Um, because our mind uh especially during this period um. A lot of thoughts, a lot of worries and fears might be going through our mind. So, uh, we I, I would like to encourage all of us if we can to actually also get a diary, or just paper to write down um the worries that we have. Just write it down, no matter uh they look silly or irrational. Write it down. When we write it down, if we are actually externalizing them, it's not inside here and becoming so overwhelming. So when we write down and we look at them, we can actually ask ourselves, like a like a scientist, uh, uh to ask, hey, is it Really true is what I'm writing here. Okay, worry number one is there evidence that this is true, and then if if it's really true, what can I do about it? So we can actually problem solve and train ourselves to problem solve instead of just dwelling and ruminating about it. So um, another way is to okay, uh, worry number two. Let's say for instance, I'm worried about my my child um, uh, not being able to cope with home based learning. So um, instead of like ruminating about it, we can actually ask ourselves, okay, um, what is another way of looking at the situation? How can we reframe this situation? For instance, uh, okay, this is a time that I can actually bond with my child. This is a time where I can find out what my child's uh, weaknesses and strengths are. And maybe um, finding ways to reframe the scenario will be good for, uh, for our, our mental well-being as well. So, um, and of course, I think lastly, I would like to add that um, that self care is very important. Self care and is uh, and we are you are all important, and all of us are precious and important. And self care, especially uh, for those who are working at home and having to take care of their children uh, from tomorrow onwards, I think it is not easy for these parents. So I guess um, not to be too hard upon ourselves and. Uh, many a times we feel um uh down or anxious or lousy because we have a lot of expectations on ourselves and perhaps we feel that we um cannot meet our own expectations or maybe we have um that we we really want to do to want our child to do well and want ourselves to do well but we cannot hit the expectations and that makes us feel very lousy. Perhaps um uh, it's time actually for us to slow down a bit to actually um allow ourselves and even our child to make mistakes. That is okay to make mistakes. It's okay to learn from mistakes. And also, um, yeah, and having me time at home, uh, it is not easy, but I think uh, having some me time, um, it is very important, it, even if it's just 10 or 15 minutes a day, talking to our family members, hey, uh, okay, mommy needs some me time now. And then, okay, uh, maybe close the door even if it's not possible. Just having a, a, a space to ourselves is very important for mental well-being as well. So um, lastly, I think uh, I just want to encourage all of us that uh, this too shall pass and this too will, will pass definitely. No matter what we are feeling right now, emotions, Come and emotions go. H-O-P-E, hang on, pain ends. Take care, everyone. Yeah. That's very nice, Joy. 
uh, hang on in ants, right? Hang yeah, on hang in. on the ants. Nice. Yes. There was many, many tips. I think I think I was, I've just moved. <laughs> I think I've been one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I was close to fifteen tips uh, from you. I've got the same amount of the Saravanan. Vanan gave us a demonstration with his with, with his different exercises as well. Uh, this has been gold, and there's so much I want to really ask you guys. But I think we have committed to keep the sessions to 40 minutes uh, or around 40 minutes max just so that it remains bite-sized and not too much. Uh, but I may get you guys on board for another session. Uh, you have raised some really good points. I want to talk about food, for example, what kind of food we can be eating. Uh, you know, I want to talk about self-care. You know, how do we, uh, how do we actually get into self-care? That's an entire topic on its own uh, altogether. So don't be surprised if I do ask you guys to, to donate more of your time uh, for the sure. community and for the yeah. cause. Uh, Happy to. It, it's been mm. lovely, lovely uh, speaking to all of you. you. guys have been so giving today. Uh, I'm just going to give you guys about two minutes each again, uh, just to share if you have any last message, any parting words uh, for our viewers and audiences, then let's have that. Joy, let's start with you. Okay. I uh, Just one message is that it's okay um, to feel not okay and it's okay to talk about it. And it's okay to seek help when we when we need it. Yeah, perfectly fine. Great. Yeah. Are there any uh, places or resources? That oh yes, yes, yes. That's right. Uh, okay. I think starting from today, uh, there's this uh resource from the government. It's called the uh, National Care Hotline. It's twenty four hours. It's meant by uh, uh qualified. Uh, counselors, psychologists. Um, so it's twenty four. Uh, I mean, um, the number. Okay, it's National Care Hotline. But the we can actually Google it. It's, um, yeah, National Care Hotline. That's right. So it's twenty four hours for for the public, free of charge. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much, Joy. Right. Really appreciate that. No problem. Uh, no Dr. problem. Sarangan, any last words for our viewers? <laughs> Um, my encouragement to everyone is that uh, uh, practice love uh, and gratitude. You know, um, this is something that is much needed. So love yourself, love yourself, love yourself, and also be loving and grateful to all your family members. We have been living a, a busy and a hurried life. Now we are forced to slow down and be with our family. It is going to be a new experience for everyone, and it's going to be a wonderful one. Uh, initially, you will find that uh, you're too close and you will get uncomfortable, uh, but it's all right. Uh, bear with it and get, get used to it because it's your loved one that you're going to be with. And because you will miss some friends, your colleagues, it's okay. You will see them when everything is okay, but family is most important. And also yourself, right? Um, uh, it's always important to spend time with yourself and uh, and uh, and take care of yourself and do all the things that is good for yourself, right? So make it a habit. Anything that is good for you, do it. Anything that is not good for you, avoid it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Dr. Saravanan. Vanan, buddy, so before you show us the dance moves, uh, last week. Okay. <laughs> Oh my, I thought you forget about that, man. Oh no, I don't forget good stuff. I have not forgotten Dr. Saravan's chocolates. I am not forgetting your dance moves. I mean, like, um, I totally, um, it was a great chat. I mean, Dr. Saramanan, we joy. Um, I think th th there's two things that I want to emphasize on. The first thing is that you shouldn't lose your mind. You shouldn't lose your health. Because um, if you let circumstances affect you, it's going to affect your physical fitness as well. I mean, that's what I always believed and it worked. So you got to be very strong. Like what Joy mentioned, there's a lot of helpline is coming in. Okay. Slow down a bit. Fine. If we got to enjoy whatever the opportunity that we have. I mean, if the situation that we have right now, and then if we're going to have a lot of worries, a lot of concern, um, you know, anxiety starts to kick in and your body chemicals, the hormones just fluctuates up and down. Like why Joy said, I think it's all 100% accurate because we need to be synchronized. There's one thing that I always say that mother nature is healing. So let her heal and she will definitely will take care of us back again. I mean, 
There's so many damages that we have done over the decades, like pollution, deforestation, pollution, and, you know, rubbish, you know, all those stuff, you know, we, we don't want to mention it, but it's time. It's time that we take everything in conscious. Don't lose your mind. Be fit. Be strong. Totally agree with Dr. Salman. He said, be grateful. Do the gratitude and be humble. Slow down a bit. It's fine. Things will get normal. Thank you, Vanan. In fact, you reminded me of something. Yesterday's session we had on how do we deal with the uncertainty, fear, and change. And uh, we had Rohit Basi with us yesterday who talks about executive presence and compassion. So he actually shared something really interesting when he talked about compassion. He said, you know, we must deal with people around us with compassion in this time. And not only the people, but we must treat the virus with compassion also. Because the virus is not intending to kill anyone. It is just looking for a healthy enough host that you can coexist with. It is just that we are not healthy enough for the virus. So, so it's just not able to find a healthy... So I think it's a very interesting perspective. So life is all about perspective eventually. Uh, but it's sometimes difficult. And I think like what Joy mentioned, we must acknowledge that at times we all find it difficult to remain positive. So our perspectives uh, can get sometimes swayed or tainted at times with negativity. And it's okay. We don't have to pretend to be strong. We don't have to be pretending to be positive all the time. The good thing is, you know, there are things that we can do to either bounce back and recover or we can seek help and support. But the first step is to first acknowledge and accept the fact that we are feeling a certain way and be okay with that, right? So I think everybody so far has maintained that. And let's first start off with acknowledging where we are at before we plan the journey as to where we want to get to. You know, no point pretending that we are already there because then we we'll always be delusional, right? And we're always sweeping things under the carpet. Uh, these have been lovely, lovely tips. Uh, these have been lovely uh, uh, insights. And I, I, I feel so blessed uh, to be in the company of such experts. Uh, this is only the second session and this is already gold. I'm just looking forward to the next few sessions ahead as well. Uh, you know, at the same time, uh, I think resources are available. Joy has shared one. Uh, Dr. Saravanan, where can people go if they want to know about food, diet, intake, you know, uh, healthcare? Um, well, there's just so much of information that is available. Dr. Google is the place to go to. However, um, they can take practitioners in Singapore. You can uh, reach out to them and uh, they will be happy to help you and advise you. So look out for your friends. There someone who's into natural therapies and health. Of course, you can always uh, reach me uh, on my Facebook. Uh, you can message me. Yeah, okay. Then um, uh, you can always reach me at 912 uh, it's at my clinic, and uh, I'll be happy to take a chat from you in WhatsApp or on a call. And um, yeah, so stay safe and stay healthy. That's just uh, thank you too. yeah. Thank you, thank you, Doctor Sir. then where can people go to to get some uh, some good tips uh, from you? You know, are you are you posting things regularly on your Facebook or your pages? Where can they go to? So um, I mean for. Um, I think social media is great, but what Joyce had mentioned, um, if what we choose to see and if we can just buffer that off. So uh, in my social media, it's all about positivity. That's only I share. So for participants or anyone out there want to reach or to want to share or just to have a casual chat or talk, you know, discussion, not a problem at all, they can hook me up at Banan Govinda Sami. That's my social media. It's B-A-N-A-N, -A -A Banan Govinda Sami. And um, I'd be happy to just chat with them or even do some dance with them as well because now dance becoming more popular right now. So, so you dance, your energy flows and you become very uh, blissful and that's the state I am right now. Always uh, full of ecstasy. Yeah, people, you know, all of you actually stick around to watch this. I, I'm, 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 I'm amazed. <laughs> We're going to cut this off from the YouTube version. So only for those of you who joined in live, uh, you get to see the privilege of Vanan dancing and uh, everybody else dancing. But uh, this is only for live audience. YouTube audience is not going to get. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Uh, I know it's a, it's a difficult time uh, for some uh, and, and the rest of you are coping well. Uh, hang in there. Hang in there. 
Um, there are a lot of resources. People are showing a lot of humanity at this time. There's a lot of free things being given and done uh, as we are going virtual. You know, a good friend of mine, Jit Puru, who runs this uh, sister platform called uh, Ideas and Inspiration. They have started something new called uh, I and I Elevate, where we are we are uh, they are bringing on board trainers to give 20 minutes of content, uh, free free training worth 20 okay. minutes, and they are putting this up on on their YouTube page. So go there. Uh, I know the, I've got a friend, Vani, I think she's on the call as well. She has reached out and offered uh, free counseling to people, uh, free mental first aid to anyone who requires it at this point in time. She has also started a book club for people to stay positively and constructively engaged uh, during this period because if you're going to be at home, you might as well be doing something uh, while you're at home. So book club, if anyone loves reading, join that. It is very structured, very well organized, so you can do that. Um, you know, I've got friends who are putting up movie reviews, so you can go ahead and, and watch movies and, and think about it and look into it. If I can up your game, uh, we have been planning for quite some time to do a literature club, uh, and we may just bring it virtual and launch it virtually before we do it face to face. So that might be coming up sometime next week. We are talking about it. Uh, there are a lot of plans that we have. We wanted to do a reflections program, a silent reflections program. Uh, we did one last year. We wanted to do more this year but we may bring that virtual as well. So I think there's a lot of opportunities for us to get constructively involved. Uh, let's do that. I'll be talking to some of our guest speakers and experts as well uh, once the call ends to see whether we can bring them on board, form a collaboration and see how we can package things for you all on a more consistent and regular basis uh, for different aspects of, our, uh, of, of this period of time that we are grappling with this uh, crisis. So uh, in the meantime, guys, stay safe. Stay healthy, stay responsible, stay accountable. To quote our Prime Minister, keep your droplets to yourself. All right. So, cheers, you guys. Uh, take care. See you guys tomorrow, 8 p.m. We'll be back with another topic, with another lineup of speakers. Um, see you then. Bye bye. Bye. Take care. Bye bye.